Brothers and sisters, I'm going to invite our next speaker onto the platform. I want you to put your hands together for someone who's dedicated a lot of his life to trying to care for the homeless and the hungry. Put your hands together for Dennis Curran, please. Before Dennis, before Dennis addresses us, I'm going to invite someone else onto the platform. A young woman, a young girl, seven years of age, who at Christmas, on hearing the stories about the homeless, the hungry, about food banks, told her mum and dad she wanted to do something. She wanted to do something to help. She suggested a rock climb to raise money for the homeless and the hungry. They managed to raise an incredible amount of over 500 pounds for loaves and fishes. Please welcome Jodie Park onto the stage. A cheque for 500 and... A cheque for 500 pounds for loaves and fishes yeah. raised by young Jody to give to Dennis today. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, it's acts like that from young Jody and the thousands of children like her across Scotland that lets us know loud and clear our future is in safe hands. Yes. We're asking out for Dennis Curran of Wolves and Fishes. I got this morning, I was in two minds where they come or not. My wife is very ill and she says to me, you know when you get ready? She said, I don't know where you leave your no hand. She says, listen, there's people wanting to know about these people that we help to feed. So you better go and tell them. So here he tell you that 500 pounds for a wee girl, eh? That shows you what children know that we don't know. That's somebody that knows that people are going without. And why are they going without? Sanctions, poverty, mental health, all types of things, eh? I'm going to tell you three quick stories, right? Over the past four weeks, a man comes to us, sanctioned, three children, four, two and one. And he gets sanctioned because the day to sign on, his wife took a miscarriage and he was in the house with the children and that was deemed not a suitable re reason for not coming to sign on. The next guy, this guy comes in and he gets sanctioned because he was in the hospital. A letter from the doctor, a letter from the hospital stating the day in question he was in. Oh, you maybe get it back. But while he's waiting to get this money back he's entitled to, he's going to come to a food bank. 2015. The next guy comes in. You know, a young man about 35, I'd say. And he's crying. He says, I've been up all night worrying about coming here. He says, and I got this morning, the thing that put the nail in the coffin for me was my two sons fighting their a tin of hot dogs. Who was going to get them? Hey, who was going to get them, you know? That made them come to us. And why did he come to us? Because he come to work for when any liquidation, he's paid off. Goes to sign on. Everything's okie dokie. The next week his wife gets paid off. And she goes to sign on. And they've got a hold on their benefits. Two years can sign on, but only one of is getting the benefit. How does that work with our equal rights, eh? She's paying her tax and insurance. He's paying her tax and insurance, but only one can get it. 
That can only happen here, eh? There's people from the us and they're being demeaned because they're poor. They're demeaned because they've not got it. And there's people, maybe somewhere in this crowd maybe even, have been accused of being something else because I've accepted an MBE. And the reason I accepted the MBE is because for 22 and a half years I've been fighting about poverty. And for once, for once it's recognised because they've got to recognise it to give me the MBE. They've got to recognise what I'm doing. So to me, that lets me know that they know it exists. And what is right about people having to use having to donate their food bank? Why in 2015, 21st century, and it's back in the 1500s, eh? Normans and Saxons. The poor's no go, so make sure they've no go. Get a lot after them. We're not moving forward, we're moving backwards. And sadly, we've got politicians talking today, and you see them. What's your policies in food banks? And they say, well, we're going to look into it. We're going to help you. I says, I hope that means you're going to shut us. Don't want people coming to us. Every man and woman's going to tell them to go to the Sainsbury's or anywhere else to buy their food. Not come to a food bank to get the stuff you shouldn't be eating. Or the stuff that's filled with the stuff they're not supposed to be eating. They're not eating fresh food. So ten goods, eh? But through your generosity, the generosity that we last to there, eh? We try to give people a ten pound voucher to go to the butcher. And the butcher there says to me, if you can put an extra pound to that, you'll get thirteen pounds worth of butcher meat. And it's no coming for the government. Doesn't matter what party it is, eh? It's coming for you. Yous are changing people's lives. If you've any idea what it is for a mother to stand in a kitchen and open a kitchen door and it's empty, then look at the children and say, who am I going to do? How am I going to feed them tonight? 2015, and children are going to school hungry and cold. Dennis, can you give me food that we don't need to cook because we've no heating? 2015. We need somebody in power that's going to change that. It's certainly not coming from England. We're going to make sure that whoever we're going to ask to stand up for us is going to stand up for the weak. It's somebody's duty to make sure that those who can't and don't have get. That's your duty. Make sure you get the same. I'm going to be here and I see every star in there, eh? Well, when you look at the food that's been in any of that van, a lot of people that's coming to us full of fear are be given hope of your contributions because they're going to get up in the morning and they will say, we've got something to eat today. God bless everyone, you. thank you. I remember, brothers and sisters, during the referendum campaign being interviewed by Alex Neal yeah. on the, uh, I think it was the Sunday Politics Show, and he was trying to scare Munger in the way that the British Bias Corporation does, and he said, but Mr Sheridan isn't to the case. Then in independent Scotland, all the banks are going to close. And I say, no, Andrew, in an independent Scotland, the only banks to close will be the food banks in an independent Scotland. Yeah.